Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck, and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at a Mythos of a Luna deck, the 4 mana sorcery that creates a token as a copy of target permanent, and if a red and green mana was spent to cast Mythos, if we're copying a creature, it enters a battlefield with the ability to fight an opposing creature as well. So the versatility of Mythos is what makes it so powerful, because we can not only copy creatures, but we can also copy lands if we just need to ramp, or we can copy planeswalkers, artifacts, and in this case hopefully we can copy enchantments too, because the goal of the deck is to copy Thousand Year Storm with our Mythos. Thousand Year Storm is a 6 man enchantment that says whenever we cast an instant or sorcery spell, we can copy it for each other instant and sorcery spell we've cast before it this turn, and we can choose new targets for those copies. So the goal of the deck is to increase our storm count by playing some cheap instants and sorceries, and then eventually cast Mythos of Iluna, copying our Thousand Year Storm, getting multiple of those enchantments in play, and then we can use any number of win conditions to close out the game and get a ridiculous amount of copies on the stack. So hopefully we'll get to see that today. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. At one mana we've got the full playset of Opt as a cheap card draw spell, and very important to have cheap spells to play once we have a Thousand Year Storm in play, so we can make sure we can play multiple instants and sorceries in the same turn. We've got Shock as a cheap burn spell, but it can also turn into a win condition if our storm count is high enough and just burn out the opponent, and just another cheap spell to go with our storm. Then we've got two copies of Fae of Wishes, which can search up any additional win conditions in the sideboard, in case we don't get there with the cards in the main deck, and can also help us find various uh, answers to problematic cards from the opponent. And we'll go over the sideboard in just a second. Then we've got two copies of Cathartic Reunion. As an additional cost, we have to discard two cards, and then we get to draw three. But once we copy Cathartic Reunion with Thousand Year Storm, we don't have to pay the additional cost anymore, so we only have to discard two cards once, and then potentially get to copy a Reunion multiple times, drawing a ton of cards in the process. And then we've got the full playset of Growth Spiral, since we do need to ramp into our Thousand Year Storm as soon as possible, and this allows us to do that. And then once we have a Thousand Year Storm in play, it's still very useful, because it lets us put lands on the battlefield untapped, so we can just cast Growth Spiral, and if we copy it multiple times, it can even ramp us while we're comboing off with Thousand Year Storm and drawing more cards. Then at 3 mana we've got the full playset of Beanstalk Giant's Adventure, Fertile Footsteps, which lets us search our library for a basic land card and put it on the battlefield untapped, which is also very important, because if our storm count is high enough, then Fertile Footsteps can even generate additional mana if we have enough lands left in the deck to search up, and then will help us cast even more spells in the same turn. And then we can also use Beanstalk Giant as an additional win condition if we don't get there with the Thousand Year Storm. And we also have four copies of Rose Thorn Acolyte, which we're also mainly using for the Seasonal Ritual Adventure, which for a single green mana adds one mana of any color to our mana pool. So we're often going to be kickstarting our Thousand Year Storm combo turn with a Seasonal Ritual as a free way to increase our storm count. And then afterwards we can cast card draw spells to draw more cards and uh, start going off that way. But every now and then we can also play the creature half if we just need some ramp or a 2-3 body, which can also tap to add one mana of any color to our mana pool, and can potentially be copied with the Mythos of Iluna, which is our next card, which as I've mentioned is a very versatile card, so we can use it to copy an opposing creature too maybe, and fight, to help us survive long enough to deploy Thousand Year Storm. We can use it to ramp if we just need one extra mana to get to six mana for Storm, and then once we have Storm in play, hopefully we can copy multiple Thousand Year Storms with this and make it go crazy. And then we've got the full playset of Migration Path, which for 4 mana searches up 2 basic lands and put them on the battlefield tapped, and we can also cycle it for 2 mana later if we have enough mana already. And then the full playset of Thousand Year Storm. And then taking a look at our mana base, we want to maximize the number of basic lands in the deck, because once we're comboing off with the Fertile Footsteps, we want to make sure we have enough basics to keep searching up, so we can play more spells in the same turn. And it's also nice if we're comboing off with Growth Spiral with the Thousand Year Storm, that we don't have to pay 2 life over and over again to Shock Lands to put those on the battlefield untapped. So we've got 7 islands, 2 mountains, and 7 forests, alongside 4 copies of Fabled Passage to make sure we still have a bit of mana fixing so we can cast our Growth Spiral on Curve. 
and then the full playset of Catria Trium, which we can also cycle later if we're flooding out a bit. And then taking a quick look at our sideboard, again, you could easily change around these sideboard cards for our Fae of Wishes, since we're playing this Ambassive one, but we've got a cheap Unsummon as a bounce spell, can also return our own Rose Thorn Acolytes back to our hands if we need the Seasonal Ritual again. We've got Mystic Repeal as a cheap Disenchant effect, Cage as a bit of Graveyard Hate, we've got some cheap answers with Aether Gust, Disdainful Stroke and Negate as counter spells. Flink can also be nice with our Beanstalk Giants to maybe end the game. Fry as another cheap removal spell. Spyglass to shut down any activated abilities. Chance for Glory, if we somehow want to take an extra turn, we can use the Rose Thorn Acolyte to make white mana. Jay's Wielder of Mysteries can also be an additional win condition. Storm's Wrath as a sweeper. We've got Inescapable Blaze, which is often how we can end the game. If we've got a storm count of two or three, we can just use Blaze to burn the opponent out. And then Plain White Celebration for a bit of life gain, maybe make some citizen tokens. And then Expansion Explosion, can use Expansion alongside Fling, sacrificing a Beanstalk Giant to maybe end the game, or just a big explosion can do it as well. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, facing a Numori deck. We've got a Fine Hands. We'll need to draw another land at some point, but then we've got double Fertile Footsteps to ramp us towards Thousand Year Storm with the Mythos in hand already. Typically want to keep opt in hand as long as possible to combo with Thousand Year Storm. Although maybe I'll end up using it to just hit my land drop. Alright, there's land 3, so no need to opt. So this might be a Mutate deck. As we see the Great Horn. So Gem Racer is going to be bad news if her opponent has that creature to mutate. Could technically take out the Great Horn here by going Mythos. I guess I don't have enough red mana to Mythos, Fight and Shock. Yeah, let's just Beanstalk here. Next turn, player enchantments, and then hopefully the turn after we can do some powerful things. Trumpeting Gnar, alright. And our opponent stays back, so they can keep Hexproof, alright. So no gem raisers, please. It's gonna be a parcel beast. And gets in for three. Alright, so how much damage do they have on the board here? 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 13, so unless they have another mutation we wouldn't even die next turn, but this Seasonal Ritual definitely helps. So how do I want to sequence my turn here? Probably start with the Seasonal Ritual, then I can Mythos double copying Thousand Year Storm, then go opts, and then go shock. And then take out a bunch of creatures, maybe. Seems fine. So let's mythos. 
do need to use my uh, red mana here. I haven't played a land yet for the turn, so I'll take the islands. Might even be able to kill my opponent here by casting another opt and then just shocking face. I guess I'll keep another shock. Yeah, I think this shock will do it. Gotta make sure I don't time out. And my opponent explodes, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing a Lurus of the Dream Den deck. No green mana, but I do have an opt to find green. And then Reunion can dig me towards Storm, perhaps. It's a little risky, but I'll try it. I'll keep a mountain. It's not as good as Forest, but still lets me cast Reunion. So this is probably the Mono White Aura deck. So I wouldn't be able to double Spiral here, no matter what I put in play. So is it better to Beanstalk, maybe? Get an extra Forest. And then next turn I can double spiral, hopefully find Storm. The enchantment I don't want to see is all that glitters, since that significantly speeds up the opponent's clock. Solid footing also would be pretty bad now that they have the additional toughness. Yeah, I think I prefer double spiral over migration path to actually get the card draw. Shock could be useful. Could cast it now on the Allsade, but I probably just hold it in hand for now. There's all that glitters. Yeah, so if they have another pump spell here, they could save the Allsade and I end up taking additional damage instead of had I uh, shocked the Allsade last turn. Or I could just take the one extra damage and Hold the shock until end of turn. I think if they had a pump spell, they might hold it in hand to protect the hawk anyway instead of saving the Alsade. So that's what my hope is here, and that way we save two damage. So I really need to find Storm here. But I wouldn't be able to play it this turn if I opt. So what's my plan? Do I opt anyway? Do I path? 
Could cycle the path. Yeah, let's start by cycling path. Another Acolyte. Alright, so now I can afford to opt. Since I have two Acolytes to increase my storm count. There it is. Probably play this. Hope I'm not dead next turn. And then I still need to find a payoff to play after we play Storm. That doesn't quite do it. So I can Storm, Adventure, Adventure. I'll have two mana. And then I can cycle path, but then I die. So that doesn't work. So I need to cycle path, but I'm not sure what I'm hoping to draw here. Mythos wouldn't even do it. Fay of Wishes also doesn't quite do it here. I guess I could get unsummon, so if they have literally nothing in hand, I could unsummon the hawk. Ah, no fail of wishes, so I am dead. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a reasonable hands. Hopefully we have enough time to deploy all our spells. Dreadmalkin, maybe a red-black menace aggro deck. As we see a Labyrinth Raptor, fine target for this uh, shock. Yeah, it's just killed now. At least I wouldn't be playing any creatures for them to steal and sacrifice. So probably cycling migration path and then shocking one of their creatures. Could shock the knight now so they can pump it. I think I wait and then if they pump it I can shock in response. And if they don't pump it I'll just let it happen. Because I do want to keep some spells in hand for Storm as well. Opponent passes, that's fine by me. Pyrohelix my face, so they are playing the Pestle and Spirit package. Is what I uh, can tell from that. Could also Fertile Footsteps and then still be able to keep up Shock, but let's go for the double ramp. So I'm taking five. So I shouldn't be at risk of dying next turn, and then uh, we can combo off the turn after. Definitely have all the pieces in hand to get there. Alright, now sequencing is key. So I want a Beanstalk Giant after having cast at least two spells. Probably kickstart with Acolyte here. Or I could Shock first since I don't care too much about uh, keeping Shock in hand. Yeah, let's shock first. Just kill a random creature. Pretty sure we can win this turn, so... Shouldn't matter too much what I kill. So 
So now I'll opt. Try and find more Rose Thorn Acolytes or Beanstalk Giants work too. Keep an opt. Alright, so let's... Uh, fertile Footsteps. Now's a good time for Mythos. I'll be able to get all my lands out of my deck. And then we can cast Opts and draw a million cards. Now I might end up decking to this Opt, but since we have Shock left in the deck, we can just draw the Shock and then cast it at instant speed before the remaining copies of Opt resolve, because Shock will resolve first and burn our opponents out. Now it is vital that you go into full control before casting opt here, since I've tried this before without going full control first and then it wouldn't let me go into full control once I start casting all these copies with a thousand year storm and then uh, I end up decking. But uh, by going full control we make sure we can cast a shock once we draw it to burn the opponent out. There's a shock, and that should do it. GG's. And my opponent scoops it up. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with uh, probably a keepable hand facing a Lurus deck. Sure. If I find Cathartic Reunion, I can discard one storm potentially. If I don't draw land, I can opt to find one. Alright, we found an island, so I don't think I need to opt. We'll save it for after the storm. Turn to Hushbringer, so this is the Mono White Enchantments deck. Could just cast Acolyte next turn to make sure I can storm. We'll see. Solid footing, so that hits for four damage now. Shock could help us take out Hushbringer later. Alright, let's just cast the Acolyte and then I'll be able to play Storm next turn at least. Might be too slow. 
If they have an ult that glitters, we're probably gonna die before we get to combo off. Bone splashing green for a season of growth, most likely. Yep. All right. So we've got all the tools we need. Hopefully we don't die. And we get to have a nice turn. Another solid footing. Take five. All right. Now, do I risk playing another Thousand Year Storm? I don't think I can afford to here. So I'll kick things off with Shock, then Acolytes, then Opts, because I want to maximize card draw. And Shock is not going to kill Hushbringer, since I'm sure my opponent has protection up anyway. So let's start here. And dig for more card draw spells. Fay of Wishes is interesting. So not the best set of draws. I can adventure Fay of Wishes and get the one mana disenchant, I guess. Is that the play? Don't really want to shuffle. Could also get on summon. So what do we get? On summon. Definitely Mystic Repeal. And what else? Could go for Inescapable Blaze. And then maybe Expansion Explosion. So... Let's uh, Mystic Repeal all the enchantments. And I don't really want to unsummon now because I want to keep it to increase my storm count for next turn unless they threaten to kill me. Stone Coil for one. All right, Opt is a nice draw. So where do I begin? Do I play another Thousand Year Storm is a question. Four, five, six. 
doesn't seem needed, to be honest. So let's kick things off with Unsummon. I'm sure my opponent has like a God's Willing or Karmatra's Blessing here. So then I could expansion the Unsummon. And then cast Opts. Maybe I should have actually unsummoned my own Acolytes. Yeah, maybe there was a play to then uh, be able to adventure again and increase my storm count. Finding Fertile Footsteps here would be great, or uh, Grow Spiral would be very good too. Alright, I guess we'll just Migration Path then. And get all the lands. It's a bit of an unusual game. So they don't have any tricks up their sleeve anymore. Mythos of Iluna. Now we're talking. So play Thousand Year Storm. So let's see, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 mana. They have Glaring Aegis in the graveyard that they can get back with Lurus. So I think my plan is to just play another Thousand Year Storm. I can play Fae of Wishes as a blocker. And then next turn just go completely crazy. And I don't think any one top deck can kill me here. No attacks, we'll untap. Another storm. Let's see. Can I afford to? I guess I can. And blaze upstairs. And we get a couple copies here. All right, sweet. I'm sure I probably could have played that end game a little bit better probably was a way to win the game a turn earlier, but uh, either way, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with uh, a reasonable hand. Got a bit of ramp with a Growth Spiral, opt to help me find a Thousand Year Storm. And then Acolyte to increase my storm count once I do. So we'll be fetching a forest on turn one. Turn one, Lobster Beast makes a 1-1 one, one token. So probably facing team or adventures. Which does have Brazen Borrower, which can bounce Storm, which can be annoying.
could shock the 1-1 one -one token right now, that way they won't be able to attack me with a Lovestruck Beast, but I think the priority here is finding more ramp cards and finding storm firsts. Alright, that's ramp, I guess. I do want to keep Mountain in the deck if possible, so that I can potentially search it up mid-combo and get access to red mana. Just plays a beast, that's fine. Perfect, alright. So no Brazen Borrowers, hopefully. And then we can start comboing. We're missing a card draw spell at the moment. Yeah, there's a Brazen Borrower. Brazen Borrower does fizzle, because they don't have a target for the original. Bench Walling Keeper. Alright. Mythos. So do I change game plan here? I could Mythos... Fight a Beast, just trade basically. It's a little underwhelming. Could copy the beasts, Shock the Innkeeper. I think we just replay Storm and hope they don't have another Brazen Borrower left. I would be taking 8, 9, so I guess I would die to Bone Crusher Giants twice. So Brazen Borrower and Bone Crusher are the two problem cards. I think I just gotta go for it. Because if I use too many spells to protect my life total, I'm just going to end up dying. Because I won't have enough cards to combo off. Alright, we're not dead, so that's good. And we drew a card draw spell. So this should be a good turn. So how do I sequence? I think start with shock, because I don't care about burning my opponent or any of their creatures. But mana is a constraint. So I go shock into Adventure Rose Thorn. Then I can Beanstalk for free. And then I'll have, let's see, five, six mana. So I can Mythos. And then Opt and have one mana left. And hopefully find another Rose Thorn with all those Opts. Sure. So let's do that. I guess I can kill Innkeeper, doesn't matter. Could go phase two. Negates, that's fine. Happy they're negating the shock here. And then I need to make sure I have green mana left over for another uh, Rose Thorn adventure, basically. And we get quite a few looks. Then I've got the shock to burn them out, so I just need to find Rose Thorn Acolyte. And I should be guaranteed to draw one here.
so now it's just about not timing out. Otherwise we're definitely guaranteed to have lethal. There's a roast thorn, so I'll just click Dawn a few times. Make all the man in the world. And our opponent sees a riding on the wall and concedes. Awesome. That was a very cool combo turn and even beat a negate. So if our opponent negated something else, there's a chance we wouldn't have been able to combo off this turn. Alright, sweet. So I'm very happy that we got to see Mythos of Iluna copying Thousand Year Storm multiple times in action today. It's definitely not the most consistent or competitive combo deck out there, folds to pretty much any counter spell, and uh, Team Reclamation, probably the most popular deck in standard post bannings, is going to be a very bad matchup for you. So don't expect it to win you any games on the competitive ladder, but just playing some random games in best of one is a lot of fun. So yeah, that's going to be it for me today. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.